His Excellency Mr. Narul Islam Nahib, Minister for Education of Bangladesh, Your Excellency, you have the floor. Mr. President, Madam Director General, Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, I feel honored to address this August gathering at this 38th session of UNESCO General Conference. Congratulations, Mr. President, for your election. We assure our support to you. Over the last 70 years, UNESCO has been working as the conscience of United Nations. As we all know, UNESCO is an idea-generating entity who gen generates idea in a human body. It is the brain. If we consider UN system a human body, UNESCO is obviously its brain. So what this brain has been doing during the last 70 years, from education to sustainable development, to intercultural dialogue, from promoting gender equality or human rights to protecting underwater heritage from biosphere reserves network of declaration on bioethnics from protecting endangered languages of developing tsunami early warning system. UNESCO is always there to address the most pressing needs of humanity of our planet. And almost everywhere UNESCO's involvement makes a difference. But have we done enough to make this world a peaceful one? A world free from hunger and diseases, free from inequality, conflict, chaos, and calamities, both natural and man-made, we have certainly achieved some successes in all these areas, but much more needs to be done. The year 2015, indeed, a landmark year. It is the final year of MDG and EFA goals, and also the year of adoption of SDGs. The Secretary General of the United Nations has rightly said the global mobilization behind the Millennium Development Goals has produced the most successful anti-poverty movement in history. Since 1990, the number of people living in extreme poverty and under five mortality rates has declined by more than half the maternal mortality ratio has declined by 45% uh, worldwide. As regards IFA goals, there has been remarkable progress across the globe. The number of out-of-school children and adolescents declined by almost half since 2000. Great progress has been achieved in gender parity, particularly in primary education, government's efforts to improve quality of education has also increased. However, the progress is uneven in sustainable inequalities exist between countries and within countries. Almost all of 800 million people living in extreme poverty and suffering from hunger live in developing countries. About 16,000 children die each day before celebrating their fifth birthday, mostly from preventable diseases. The maternal mortality ratio in developing country regions is still 14 times higher than in the developed regions. In spite of progress, IFA goals remain unachieved. There are still 58 million children out of school worldwide and around 100 million children who do not complete primary education. Gender disparity persists in a third of the country. Within our countries, big gaps still exist between the poorest and richest household. Millions of people are lagging behind because of their sex, age, disability, ethnicity, or geographic location. Inequality in education has increased, putting the poor, disadvantaged, and marginalized in a challenging situation. Given this backdrop of MDG and IFA, a new universal setup of goals, targets, and indicators, sustainable development goals have been adopted. The SDGs incorporate the unfinished agenda of MDG and IFA and expand this further. Achieving SDGs would be challenging indeed if we enable 
the boost re research to tackle climate change, impact on the small island developing states and other vulnerable countries like Bangladesh. Already the world has been introduced with a relatively new term, climate change refugees. It will, if we are not adequately serious about reducing carbon emission and stop this rise of global temperature, the developed world might have to face a huge influx of climate change refugees in the near future, and that will certainly hamper achieving uh, SDGs in the stipulated time. We are hopeful that COP21 will address all these and will eat, reach a consensus to tackle climate change impact. <laughs> Mr. President, the world is ever changing and the new world is facing complex and transnational new challenges. Building on our experience and lessons, we must stop the demands of new situation while remaining true to our long-term commitments. Thank you, Mr. President.